Norwich Castle, a prison story. As you visit Norwich Castle today, we hope you find it a welcoming place. But for most of its history, this building has been a prison. Gradually, from the 13th century, the vast complex of buildings and defensive structures which had formed part of the Norman castle disappeared. These artists' impressions show the city encroaching on the north and west sides until only the keep remained. Increasingly used as a prison, it ultimately became the home of the Norfolk County Jail. One of the castle's most famous prisoners was Robert Kett. When his popular rebellion in 1549 was crushed by the king's armies, he was executed here, his fate now commemorated by a plaque near the entrance. There were few major changes in the running of the jail until the late 18th century, when it was visited by leading prison reformer John Howard. He was especially shocked by the dungeon, in which has been sometimes an inch or two of water. John Howard's report prompted local magistrates to bring in renowned architect Sir John Soane to alter the building to improve conditions. By 1794, Soane had remodelled the inside of the keep, inserting cell blocks around a central yard which was open to the sky. He also added a new building on the side of the keep to accommodate more prisoners. Soane's new wing was soon overcrowded and outdated, however. In 1822, it was replaced by a new jail, designed by local architect William Wilkins. As you can see here, and on the 3D model behind you, it had three cell blocks radiating from a centrally placed jailer's house. This shape reflected the latest international thinking in prison design. Each cell block housed a different category of inmate, such as debtors or women prisoners. Near the jail entrance was the corn mill, powered by prisoners walking treadmills. This was a gruelling task, and many prisoners fainted during a long session on the wheel. The corn was sold to local bakers, one of several money-making products of the prison. Exercise sessions were included in the daily routine for prisoners. Between the cell blocks were small exercise yards, each one visible from a ground floor window in the jailer's house. The jailer could therefore check on each yard from his own home. The jailer could also see into the day rooms in each cell block. Here, prisoners were kept occupied at all times with hard, repetitive work tasks. This bill, for example, advertises mats and matting made at Norwich Castle. Simple meals were also served here at set times in the day. The day room shown here is near the felon's cells. These prisoners had committed a range of crimes, such as theft and burglary. The cell reconstructed in this gallery is a felon's cell. Not all prison cells were quite so narrow and small. This debtor's cell is substantially larger, with a fireplace. Here you can see the elderly former solicitor William Cole, who was imprisoned in Norwich Castle for bankruptcy in 1830 and lived here for 16 years until his death. The chapel was on the upper floor of the jailer's house, accessed across bridges from the cell blocks. Here you can see the chapel around 1880, with a turnkey taking his position before one of the daily services. The chair just like this one can be seen in the gallery.
The prisoners we know most about are the murderers. James Rush was the most notorious. The Stanfield Hall murders took place in November 1848, when a masked intruder, later identified as Rush, burst into Stanfield Hall near Wyndham, shooting dead Isaac Jeremy and his son. Further shots wounded a woman servant and the younger Mrs Jeremy. Rush's trial and subsequent execution made national headlines and attracted thousands of people to the city. Rush is one of 17 murderers buried in the castle. The evidence of the castle's life as a prison is all around you as you visit today. As you approached the castle, you probably walked over the spot on the bridge where hangings took place up to 1867. In the central rotunda space, the light wooden flooring under your feet shows the location of the jailer's house. The Boudicca Gallery, Temporary Exhibition Galleries and Natural History Gallery were all created out of the original main cell blocks. When you stand in the keep now, it is hard to imagine that this space was once open to the sky, with a cell block hiding most of the Norman walls. The roof, giant arches and fine balcony you can see now were added when the prison was converted to a museum in the late 1880s. In 1887, the Norfolk County Jail was moved to a new location on Mousehold Heath, where it remains. <laughs>